in 1876, Captain uh, Gren lives with memories of bloody battles against the Sioux. Drawing on his combat experience, he becomes a military advisor to the Japanese emperor who is keen to open his country up to Western traditions and trade and to eradicate the ancient warrior caste of the samurai. But this influence Captain Algren, who soon finds himself caught in the crossfire of a confrontation between two worlds and to Iraz with his sense of honor guiding him. Released in 2003, The Last Samurai tells the story of an American officer who travels to Japan to help the army modernize and quell a rebellion of samurai hostile to the country's rapid westernization. Between two hangovers, Al Grant trains the new imperial army in the art of modern and industrial warfare before being captured by Katsumoto Nobutada's rebel and taken to the mountains. In daily contact with the samurai, Aldren is seduced by their spirits and value and after a severe rehab join the fight for honor and tradition against the greed of the Meiji Emperor's advisors. I won't go into an extensive review of this movie which despite its many many flaws is a cult movie. I saw it in the movie theater when I was a teenager and when I came out I wanted to fight for honor and against injustice with katanas. So the film is pretty, the photography is magnificent, the soundtrack by Hans Zimmer is incredible of course and the performances by Tom Cruise and especially Ken Watanabe are impeccable. The script is classic but yet effective, it's kind of a Japanese version of Dances with Wolves. As for the flaws, well, let's start with the obvious. This film is a blockbuster and to keep the idiots in the back row in line, we've turned up all the spots. So the samurai are very nice, the imperialists are very, very nasty. Whereas the reality is much more nuanced. The samurai are fighting for the preservation of tradition and their way of life based on honor and the Bushido code, but also actually for the maintenance of their privileges as the dominant class of the Japanese society. And on the imperial side, the challenge is to bring modernity to a country sorely lacking in it, which must become a power if it is to avoid being beaten up by Westerners like China throughout the whole of the 19th century. And of course, we have the anachronisms, having the samurai fight with bows and arrows at this point of history, as if nothing had changed since medieval Japan makes absolutely no sense. Both sides at this point possess and have mastered modern firearms. And from a historical point of view, the film might as well equip the emperor troops with M16s. The film is loosely based on the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877 and the main protagonist is inspired by Jules Brunet, a French officer who resigned from the French army out of loyalty to the last Tokugawa Yoshinobu Shogun who had previously signed a treaty of friendship with Napoleon III. And let's talk about Jules Brunet and his story now. So Jules Brunet was a brilliant artillery officer in Napoleon III's army, taking part in the Mexican expedition and receiving the Legion d'honneur on his return. In November 1866, he joined the Imperial Guard Artillery Regiment and was sent to Japan under the command of Captain Jules Chanoine, who arrived in 
Yokohama in early January to train the army of the Shogun. After Commodore Matthew Perry had opened up the country to foreign trade under the threat of cannon fire in 1853, Japan understood the perils it was facing and sought to modernize its army to secure itself, calling on foreign military advisors to do so. At the time, the French army, which had not yet been spanked by the Prussians, was still considered as the best in the world, having defeated Russia in the Crimean War, then Austria in the Italian War of Independence, and of course retained the prestige of the Napoleonic Wars. Yo! Now to understand the events leading up to the Boshin War, a little bit of background. Although Japan is an empire, the Mikado has only spiritual power. Japan has been ruled by the Shogun, a military leader since the 17th century. Following the opening of the country and its rapid modernization, two factions emerged. The Shogunate behind the Tokugawa, supported by France, the clans in the west of the country in favor of Emperor Meiji, supported by Great Britain. And now you have the same old story over and over. Any pretext is good enough for France and Great Britain to start a quarrel. And by the way, feel free to slice the subscribe button with your katana and send a shuriken to the like button. So now we're in November 1860 and the situation is about to degenerate. The Shogun, no longer hoping to make up for his technological lags, relinquished his shogunal office in favor of the young Emperor Meiji. He hoped to install a government made up of local lords, the daimyos, but his collegiate power could not prevent a coup d'etat by reformist supporters who re-established the old monarchy model on January the 3rd, 1868. Yoshinobu Tokugawa was forced to take up arms by his samurai, worried about losing their prerogatives once and for all. This marked the start of the Boshin War and on January 27, the Shogun's armies were routed at the Battle of Toba Fushimi by an imperial force already fully modernized by English competitors despite their vast numerical superiority. Disappointed, France recalled its ambassador and was forced to proclaim its neutrality in the war. The now undesirable Shanwan mission was ordered to leave the country and withdrew to Yokohama to be repatriated in November. For his part, Jules Brunet, full of military ethic and honor, refused to return in order to continue serving the French cause in this country and he felt it was a matter of honor not to abandon the shogun and his loyal samurai, brother-in-arms whom he had instructed and I quote I decided that in the face of the generous hospitality of the shogunal government I should respond in kind. He resigned on October the 4th but Shanwan refused to accept his resignation. Brunet found himself in an ambiguous situation. The Ministry of War finally placed him on a year's and paid leave implicitly regularizing its situation but specifying that in Japan, where he was nevertheless authorized to stay, he would henceforth have the status of a private individual. Brunet seems to have benefited from a spirit of esprit de corps. Nine of his fellow officers left to join him. The imperial forces were outnumbered and thanks to their heavy artillery now at the upper end on the island of Honshu, to to better resist the shogun's troops retreated to the island of Hokkaido and on December 25, 1868 founded the short-lived independent Republic of Ezo with Takeaki Enomoto elected as president. 
Brunet was the military advisor to the Ministry of War, organized the defense and took over the training of soldiers. On May the 30, the Emperor's army stormed the island of Hokkaido by land and by sea. The 800 or so besieged troops greatly outnumbered were forced to surrender. Fearing mistreatment by the victors, particularly of the wounded, Brunet and the French officers were picked up just in time by a French ship on June the 9th. Officially, France congratulated Emperor Meiji for restoring order in the country, but would not agree to return the officer who had helped the rebels, on the pretext that he was in the hands of an independent military authority. On his return to Paris, Brunet received a statutory reprimand for interfering in the political affairs of a foreign country, and his ministry removed him from the ranks of active officers by suspension of employment. Napoleon III approved this sanction on October the 15th. France let it be known that Brunet had been dismissed from his post, having been referred to a council of war. In reality, Brunet was not formally disapproved, but he was condemned to absolute discretion. Thus, when Japan considered itself satisfied with the punishment, Brunet was actually appointed director of an important weapon manufactory, an appointment that had not been formally announced in the journal officiel. Course. At the same time, he enters into a beautiful wedding, and his former superior, Captain Shanwan, is his best man. At no time was he blamed for his Japanese epic. After that, Jules Brunet took part in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 as a captain in the 8th Artillery Regiment at Metz, where he was taken prisoner. He was made an officer of the Legion d'Honneur. After the fall of the Empire, he joined the new government and participated in the repression of the Paris Commune. Then an honorable and quieter military career ensued. He was now a military attaché in Austria and in Italy, commander of the Legion d'Honneur, and finally became chief of staff to Chanoine, his former officer, who became a general and the minister of war. On March 11, 1895, Japan, which had just emerge victorious from a grueling modern war with China, remember this former samurai by elevating him to the rank of Grand Officer of the Sacred Treasury of the Mikado. Brunet was also awarded the Order of the Rising Sun. Finally, Jules Brunet died on August 12, 1911 and was buried in the Père Lachaise Cemetery. And that's it, that's the story of Jules Brunet, the character who inspired Tom Cruise. Thank you as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day, bye.